And I'm very happy to welcome uh, Miguel Mainz from Denmark to our HFM master classes today. And um, Miguel, maybe you can give a sign so that everybody sees your face already now. Hey. <laughs> Hope you can see me. Two thumbs up. I'm happy um, that you found found your way to our Zoom. And um, yeah, Miguel is a CEO and animation film director at um, Skeld. I hope I pronounce it right. It's Danish. Right. And um, he does many other things and activities um, next to his directing work. And um, before working for Skeld, he was the co-founder of Sun Creator. And this was from 2013 to 2018. And that's a production company. And uh, it's, for example, known for co-producing the film Flea, which was nominated for three Oscars. Maybe one of you saw this film. It looks very nice. Um, Miguel left Sun Creator to continue the animated web series Tales of Elythrian, which has a huge fan base. Uh, the first episode, episode called The First Hero has at the moment almost 2 million clicks on YouTube. So it's a huge success in the internet. And Miguel seems to me to be uh, creative in many different ways. So uh, he works on feature films as well as story experiences on different platforms, on original projects such as 2D films, on web comics, on graphic novels, on YouTube and live streaming, on role playing books, illustrations, game developing. So it's a very long list. Um, so I'm quite impressed, Miguel, like of how many things you do at a time. And uh, Miguel is not only a passionate director, but also a gifted producer. His colleagues and Miguel could raise, for example, more than $300,000 with Kickstarter campaigns. And here again, um, his online community with around 200,000 people is very important for his work. So you can see that, um, or I have the feeling that you are a big networker and working a lot with other people. And you don't only work with other people, but you also like teaching or helping others. So um, not only today, but in general, um, Miguel is teaching at the animation workshop or other schools in animating, design or storytelling. And yeah, today the Hessen talents are lucky to be able to have one-to-one -one meetings with Miguel. And um, this will be after the talk and after the Q&As. Yes, so now I am very curious, uh, Miguel, to, uh, yeah, to, to watch your presentation and um, you and the public, um, like I see many students from the Basisklasse and from Kunsthochschule Kassel and from the other um, schools in Hessen, you all, you have the opportunity to ask um, questions after the presentation. So um, you can write them down for yourself and at the end we will ask the questions. So uh, the Zoom stage is yours, Miguel. Thank you, Joy. Awesome presentation. I feel all uh, starstruck, starstruck um, with all these uh, nice, like uh, it's like a resume of the last 10 years that's just like <laughs> presented. That's awesome. Um, I'm just gonna share with the sound because we're gonna have some animations in here. And since we only have an hour, uh, I have tried to shorten everything down a little bit. Um, so if there are some things you wanna, hear more about about what I have selected um, then um, write the question so we can take it afterwards. But basically um, I'm going to talk about my journey from starting a very big studio uh, called Stunt Creature and then leaving that and focusing on my directing and uh, making uh, uh, producing projects that are um, you know more based on like the indie projects and uh, and um, I call it passion projects, but it's it's not what it is. It just means that it's you are less people uh, coming up with an idea than making something, you know, hundred people. So let's dive into this. Um, you mentioned pretty <laughs> nicely who I am, Joy. So I'm Megal Mines, and I directed from the animation workshop. Um, I call myself director and producer because I do both, but uh, I usually say. Um, because I also do writing and make board games and, and games and all that. But I think that it is good that you take one focus at a time. So when I'm a director, I focus mainly on directing. And when I'm a producer, I focus mainly on producing. Um, but I also think you should tell anyone that they are 
one thing only because we have such a long life so why not do the stuff we we like doing um the first movie i did was called the reward i'm going to show a little clip from it later and the theme of that was the journey is the reward and um i really tried to make my work life um fun and um and work with people who are as passionate as myself um and um and you know we're doing animation films because we love the media and love storytelling and love art, um, and I think that uh, I found a pretty good way of um, maintaining that kind of uh, spark. So let's dive into it. I started uh, Sun Creature in thirteen, and uh, you might have seen some of the things we um, we did, like the Flea movie, the three time Oscar nominated one. We did Ivan Doe, which is like. A, Cartoon Network show. Uh, we also worked on Song of the Sea with Cartoon Saloon and uh, Nolan. Then we did uh, Japanese anime shows and uh, commercial films. And, and um, of course, the project I took with me out when I left. And I learned so much uh, doing Sun Creature. And um, when I go through my journey, you can see how you go from three friends sitting in their own apartment with their laptops and then growing into a company with 108 uh, employees and, um, and different departments around the world and why I decided to leave that. So the next studio I made is called Scale Creative and um, um, or like Scale, I call it Scale Creative just because um, Scale is a more common word. Um, but um, in, yeah, in Sun Creature, you can see some of the artwork here. It's very high budget and, uh, you know, doing Netflix stuff and League of Legends and, and all the things you, it requires you to be uh, making a very, very high standard in a short amount of time. I think the first time I experienced that was on like a, a Coca-Cola commercial where we had like high budget, but you only have like a month or a month and a half. And then um, you have to like gather a team and, and make that thing work. So. Uh, automatically, you work a lot with with other countries and um, and co-produce stuff. But um, but as long as you have like your yeah, what's called your um, your vision in the company, then you know it's it's pretty easy. Um, and when we started having different departments where, where it was more independent movies and this commercial work, um, that was what I took with me out in um, in Skjell. So. You can see like it's same kind of projects where sometimes it's commercial, but you can see it has much more that kind of style that like it's like an ongoing thing. So, um, um, so when you set out to make an animation studio or become an independent animator, what you do is what that's like people will see you as what you what you do. So if you like doing something, you might as well try to succeed with that because you can fail in everything. So. Um, yeah. Um, then I also just briefly want to mention like the YouTube channel, um, Tales of Lithuania, and that became, uh, because the YouTube channel has like 172,000 subscribers, it became my own way of broadcasting. So um, when you have your own channel and something where you have a lot of viewers watching stuff uh, you do, then all of a sudden you are not just a director with a vision, you are actually also um, having a lot of ambassadors who support your uh, your projects. So it started out just being the the web series, but I actually also used it for you know when we put music make music videos or make like interactive series or put out a Kickstarter or a board game. This channel becomes my way to get the first viewers to see it, where a lot of other people would have to do uh, advertisement and. Um, and team up with broadcasters and, and stuff like that, which is also completely cool and fine. It's just usually a much bigger scale because you um, you have to be competitive in your when you do a big show, 52 episodes, that's like, you need to go out on an international market. You need to have a lot of partners and co-producers and and with your commercial work, you need agencies and, uh, and clients. So with this, it became much more me and the community. And then of course the team, um, which is a big part of it as well. So Tales of Lithuan is my sandbox where I can have fun and the commercial work is where I can, you know, um, grow the company and get new competences and, and um, get higher budgets. 
Uh, so what uh, I'm working on at the moment in, in Skjell is, the, of course, Tales of Lethran. We're doing a new pilot for the next season. And um, then we have um, a feature film, low budget feature film in, for like the same audience in, in development and also a, a family movie. Then lately I was just, uh, I was just getting the opportunity to direct a, a very long TV show. Uh, so that might be where my focus will be for some time. Um, and then um, we, of course, have client work, music videos, and uh, and work together with other uh, studios on their on their shows, as well as teaching. Yeah. So that was a little bit about what I do. And um, in in scale, we're sitting. Uh, I try to keep it to uh, around like um, five to five to max twelve people in scale, just because I want that authentic feel in it in this company. Um, and so you, everybody know each other and we can play Dungeons Dragons and uh, do stuff without anybody feeling like they're not part of the, the team. Uh, yeah. So in scale, we're we, um, usually all of us pretty independent um, creatives and we have different roles to fit that um, is important. And um, yeah, I feel like just like the last 10 years have taught me a lot of how I uh, to set up, uh, yeah, how I like to be in a studio. And um, let's watch a little a little clip from one of the music videos so you can see some of the things we do. This is like um, an Australian band that contacted us and then um, basically uh, they said, hey, we love the stuff and the style. Do you want to do like um, a music video with us? And I said, what's the budget? And it was not as much as I was, uh, would expect, but I said, then we invest a little bit from our company into this music video, if we can broadcast it as well and get it as part of our uh, rooster. So we teamed up and we got all the freedom to do like a story as we wanted and the style as we wanted, but using that song. And that is like a great way to get an opportunity to basically make a short film, even though you're professional. So let's see a little clip from that. I'll just show one or two minutes. The man of ice was not always this way Oh, he had a burning heart But he traded it away To someone who showed him nothing but disdain And his heart was not the same Couldn't handle the pain Now ice runs through his veins and this love burned bright like the stars at night But the stars don't always align No, the stars don't always align The woman of fire lives howling in the night She was born into a world that didn't treat her Couldn't handle the pain So fire she became That's like um, one of the projects that uh, we try to put in between all the other like bigger projects, just so we have uh, freedom to sit and play with um, with various styles. And um, oopsie, I just want to move on to the next. You want it, so. And um, then 
no, the, like just like that project, while we do, of course, we can sit and do like a TV show or like a, develop a feature film or, or work on like, a, let's just say a, a big design company and do a collection or an ad or something. Then this is just very nice uh, to have in between all of that. Then uh, we also experiment like with styles, try to push ourselves creatively. So for example, we reached out by like a, a traditional um, a classical orchestra who wanted an animation and we were told to come up with like an animation that we could do the music to and then we wanted it to be mixed media so we got a live action dancer to get into the the mix and then um, we were basically making storyboard with all these things in mind everything had to be live so i'm just going to show a little clip from that as well let's see if i can just play it from here <laughs> into it so we can see the dancer yeah, let's skip into the dancer because it's a little bit long so let's just see this clip to a little bit of time restraint we're just going to skip on and then uh, the last thing i want to show is just like the main show tales of lithran uh, a little clip from that um this is just like the thing we've been on going doing for like the last uh, yeah the last 10 years this has just been a project that followed me uh, so that's like 26 episodes let's just look at the let's just look at the one of the more high but uh, where we had more budget for it so we just take this one So I think that's like four hours of content. So that's just digging in. It's a big fantasy universe we made there. All right. So let me just take you a little bit, bit back in time here. We um, we started in 13 January. We were just freshly born animators. And uh, I will just underline the fact we were educated animators. We loved world building. We loved storytelling. We loved uh, making films. And me and my good friend Kenneth, we had just been doing a... Um, after school and in, in lunch breaks we've just been animating together like i think we did half an hour of animated content next to school just because we loved it so much so it was it made sense for us to go together and um and make a a, a film and try to make a, a company and this was just where we were sitting and making some creature it was just like a, a sitting with post-it notes sitting in uh, like we didn't even have chairs enough we were just sitting and coming up with all this and for some reason, we got all the funds we applied for, except for the big one where we said, we want to do a show. And they said, nah, 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 nah. you need to be a producer, a writer and a director, the golden triangle. And then um, we said, all right, but then we'll, we'll just be that. And I said, I'll be a director. Can you be the, um, like, uh, the, the art director? And we write together and then pro, pro be the producer. And then, um, and, um, then uh, we, kind of just put on a lot of hats on and then we went out and did a Kickstarter. You can see this was how we felt about ourselves. We were just like, uh, we felt it so much. Um, very young and, uh, and ambitious. So this movie called The Reward, uh, 
went out and became viral online. So it had like I think two hundred thousand clicks a day in these in, at this time. So we decided to do, go for crowdfunding and find the money ourselves. And then we said to the funds, we're going to come back and we're going to have our own investment with us. Um, and here's a little teaser of how it looked in the beginning. This was like, we basically treated this project like it was already a big feature film in the cinemas. And we got all the people we know who had like names to be like, look at our film, give it a review. We'll put it out as like, um, a very delicious meal. So this is what is focused on here. And at this point, everybody we talked to uh, had different ideas of how we should set out to make this studio and how we were going to be. Some people were just like, we want to hire you, go to our company and make something. Or, hey, we want to buy the rights to make a feature film. Or, hey, we want to do this. But we just decided we just wanted to do a lot of little short films in this world with different characters meeting each other. And, and we had it all planned out. So we said no to everything. And then we said, we're just going to make the thing we want to do, which is, was like a little web series of of a self-contained episode with characters running around in this world that created a bigger uh, picture so we did crowdfunding and uh, raised one hundred and forty three thousand um, dollars and the way we did that was basically just we found an audience and a, a community that uh, were kind of like ourselves so it was super easy to ping pong with them and play with them and we just had the most fun time um, raising this and we said okay let's try to make it all into a storytelling and movie making so we made this the journeys the reward theme into like a, like a, almost like a christmas calendar where every day people went into the campaign um, they could see how much money it had raised and then we would move the characters on uh, on this interactive map here and make a little comic with where they were so if we didn't raise any money, they would just get stuck in the mountains. But if they if we got money, then they would move on and we would get new uh, adventures. And then people could see what we could finance in the production. Uh, so it was a pretty clever way of, of, ma of making financing playful also for the community. And it was super fun for us as well. And we created just a lot of content. That's also how we started doing the, before uh, Twitch was a thing, we sat and did live streaming. Uh, while we were just telling stories and doing like our own little role playing like uh, comic but talking over photos and then people would sit in the chat and say yeah go to be talk to them instead of kill them and then we would sit and tell a story while we were drawn and we would do like amas online so people could ask us all questions and they could tell us what to draw really being transparent because when we did this it was a world where animation was a closed world uh, the audience got stuff when it came out and then they didn't see the process until the art book was out. And we kind of had all the rights to the project, which was kind of rare. So we could just share everything and be like, just make fan art. We don't care. It's uh, I mean, we love it, but it's OK with us. We don't have any grudges if um, our project is being used by, by the community. Yeah, now that's much more normal. Uh, you know, you have uh, uh, original content creators on Instagram and on uh, YouTube and uh, and everywhere who who does this, um, but I think we were part of of one of the first waves where two D was um, becoming interesting again. It was very three D heavy uh, industry at that point. Um, and uh, then all of the beggars and the people who helped us and participated in the in drawing competitions. We just said. You get into the show, we design your characters and we make this world. So we had lots of designs with interaction. Um, and we got drawing competitions where people would sit and draw from our color keys and storyboards. And that could look something like this, where we got this sent from the community. And 
in the movie it would look like this. Yeah, um, and that was basically a guy who didn't even know about us or the project. He just saw the drawing competition online. So that was, we got a lot of, of uh, things back. Usually you sit in production, you wait for two years before you can release your stuff. Here we made something, we released it, and then people could sit and get excited while we were also getting excited. Then we sent out um, dolls that people could draw cloth on. So they could basically design the, the fashion of this guy who was going to be licking sun and speedos. Um, yeah, let's just skip the examples you can see. We just, of course, implemented it in the show. Uh, let's see. There we go. It was an armor. So some of the ideas that people came with was hilarious. We just basically could never have come up ourselves with the idea that, of course, this knight has armor as well on his speedos. We also sent in um, sound competition, like voice competition, so people could send in their own voices, which was hilarious. Just listen to this guy. Possible to find that voice actor in real life. That's the only <laughs> great community. It's awesome. Um, all right. So, yeah, my point is just we did a lot of transparent stuff and played with the community, and um, and this was the way we created the first company, and it was um, a, a way of working that um, I particularly really uh, enjoyed um, and um, and and had a lot of fun with. So, of course. That's something we want to continue. Uh, we then finally did uh, our film. And making a company was tough. That was like, um, so the first film was all about the journeys, the road and jolly. And the second one was much more about like how, you know, tough it was uh, being creatives, but sit until 2, 3 a.m. working and losing, uh, you know, uh, your relationships and, stressing out and, and all that so it became a much more dark film you saw the first teaser this one just a little clip of it you can see it's much more uh, dark in the tone And then this is the point in time where we scaled up. We were getting, went from three people, uh, three uh, partners in the studio, and then we got four other partners in, which was like uh, you know producers and people we had worked with uh, until that point, and uh, and uh, friends from France, uh, which was also uh, made sense that we later made a, made a French department. Um, but we scaled up, and uh, and this was where we started having different departments, and we worked on on. on very big uh, things uh, during this time. Um, and we kind of had like a work for hire department and, um, uh, you know, the, 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 the indie part of the community project. So in the community projects, I came up with like a new idea. How can we fund this, um, uh, but in a new piece, a new experience? At that point, American Idol and X Factor and all that was pretty popular. So we just told the audience they could vote uh, characters with the characters we were going to make movies about. Is my uh, signal okay? Can you hear me well? Like, uh, do I go through clearly? Just to check. Yeah, good. 
Um, and here we started developing the characters much more. We um, we went down in world building. We had become older, so we we worked on a lot of multiple projects at the same time, um, both doing this and sending out Kickstarter gifts and making uh, big serious projects was like a, demand a lot of uh, structure and um, and um, you know uh, planning uh, and communication. Um, and different responsibilities to make to make that work. Um, um, yeah, and we of course continued the, the the web series, but the stuff we couldn't finance. Uh, I was like, why don't we uh, make that into comics? It was something we had done uh, in relation to the first Kickstarter. So we made comics that could then be done into animations later um, i'm not gonna go too much into that but you can see that we kept the, the quality and the level we wanted stories to come out all the time uh, so it was more about keeping the project uh, alive while we also did other projects um and then uh, i've done four kickstarters that was pretty big but one of the things i've been very happy about was that at this point we also started a patreon um, which could maintain the animations for the YouTube channel because it is just not a big budget compared to when you do other stuff. Uh, you really have to, if you do stuff like these projects, you really have to have one at least who has like the torch and keep the project happening because it's so easy to focus on on what's urgent right now and and, and what projects come in. If you if you want to keep like a, a project like this going, then you have to have somebody who. Uh, who maintains it or at least decide what periods it's being worked on and patreon helped with that because we got monthly uh, income uh, to help the, the channel and the episodes and then we did interactive shows we did 14 episodes where the quality was pushed down but um, because we were less people on it and less time but the the concert came out every, every month with an episode where the audience could vote uh, what should happen in the next episode. So it became a really um, engaging um, thing. Um, yeah, I'm not going to go too much into that uh, because I also want to make it for our Q&As. Um, because we worked with so many different artists, we also uh, started promoting artists who then did artwork for, for the project so we could have this ecosystem uh, going. Um, yeah. And then we did the, the first season, had lots of um, fun with continuing the characters that um, the audience had voted in. You can see um, we, had, we had been become much more experienced. We were working on, I think we were even working on Flea at this point, uh, at least the, the early uh, phase of it. Um, so we, we just had like, um, because of this project, we had gotten our name out and, um, and because of our scaling up and focusing on so many different things, we we um, were able to do a lot of cool things. Yeah, you can see it on the on the YouTube channel. I'm not going to show this trail either, but of course, it's just more episodes in the same style. Um, then comes the time in 18 where I decided to leave. We have been doing very cool projects, and um, and I think as an artist, I was just uh, in the last phase. I felt that we went more and more away from doing these things I've been talking so much about uh, in this, uh, like my, like be, just being an, a director or a filmmaker and producer and running a studio and making art books and making figurines and making comics and making movies and teaching, all this stuff made me a very, of course, very busy man, but also I, I had a lot of different, uh, if I came up with an idea, I was able to realize it, you know, it was super fun and, um, and I felt that become more and more uh, restricted. And we were, because when you grow as a company, it is just structure is, is necessary. You have to have like a much more, uh, um, you have a much higher cost every month and you you have like a much bigger um, risk in, involved. So um, when we decided to close this department, uh, that's when I decided to actually take that department and move it out of some creature and create scale. Um, and everything was fine with that. So I actually basically took the whole community with me and um, 
and all this uh, engagement with the audience and the YouTube channel and, and stuff. And we named it uh, Tales of Ethran for it became a brand. Um, and then Skjell, uh, I made a rule set where I wanted to, um, you know, have more time to direct and, um, and work with people in the same position uh, who wanted uh, uh, to be more, have more responsibility and, and basically a little team of leads uh, where we could sit and do this stuff uh, efficiently and if you come up with an idea we are able to finance it or, or realize it um, so it became a mix of working with other uh, studios on like bigger things uh, where we you know uh, direct and 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 uh, make the visual packages and, and development and then um, doing uh, around two i think was was a good number uh, client uh, like uh, work for high projects a year that is just good to have and uh, and just yeah healthy, but then the rest of the time also working on our own, our own stuff and um, um, and continuing in, in these projects where you have a little bit more uh, of a say, um, and I think that worked really well. It's a uh, it it was just really fun and we still have a good relation me and and, and some creature and help each other. Um, so for me that was just like I came out and you know that creativity bah, just. Uh, exploded and i did another kickstart i did a new season got to work with uh with people i'd worked with before but also new talents who became part of the core team um yeah and just to mention some of the games we, we did for the tales of Lithra, and of course there was the game and the role-playing system that was mentioned earlier uh, so people could play in the world the art books and um where we were to, to teach people as well and um and yeah, just the transparency continued. We just kept the channel that was basically decided close to to continue, and we got more than a hundred thousand more followers after after uh, I left. Um, and with the uh, with the this project continued, we had so much merchandise from previously that I could then continue the cycle with. And basically, a lot of the really hard part, you know, you plant a tree, it, it grows, then you know, you wait a while, then the fruits come and that was where the project was you know it was at a place where i could all of a sudden now i can play i have a name i have a brand i have all that stuff that is so hard to get to so for me that had a very big value in terms of also just having fun with with stuff and coming up with creativity and luckily the people i work with usually find it super cool as well so we can they all become part of the project as much as i am so uh, it's all a, a team effort, of course. I wouldn't be able to do any of this without this these amazing teams I've worked with. Uh, I have to underline that. Um, Miguel, yeah. I'm sorry to interrupt you. Just yeah. to remind you a bit of the time, because um, at uh, one thirty we will have the um, the one to one meetings. Yeah. So but maybe... I have like. I have planned like two minutes more, like okay, uh, so we have perfect, three, perfect. three minutes for Yes, okay. thank you. That's, uh, some, I'm rounding up uh, in two minutes. And then we started cross-promoting with big names like YouTubers who had two million followers. And all of a sudden they said, hey, we love your stuff. Just work, which became another big door that put that, their profiles into the animation. So we started being this, you know, this, influence a family where you could we were just the animators who were like hiding behind our films but had um, i'm not sure I, am i the only person who can't hear Miguel? no it's stuck for me as well okay frozen Let's wait a little moment yes uh, the connection wasn't stable Miguel. i think we couldn't hear the last of your sentences but you can hear me now. Yes, now we can hear you. Okay, sweet. Super, super. But I'm just going to skip to, through this. It was just like the different things we focused on on that project. But as you see, we did music videos, developed storyboards and, com and uh, compositing for big TV shows. And then we worked with uh, TV stations on pilots for TV series that then happened in feature films. And I'm not going to go too much into that. Um, but this became like a really nice uh, community. And... Um, then at some point I wanted to say, hey, we've done so many animations. I love games. You see, I paint so much Warhammer and uh, figures. So I wanted to do my own board game. And who will stop me? You know, it's like um, 
Then I got to work with game designers from the States and I got to uh, printing companies in Germany uh, actually. And um, I got to work with, uh, with cool layout artists in Poland and just reached out to a lot of people and financed a pre-sale of 300 board games. And that opened up for like a whole board game in this like world. So, uh, and then we could use all the artwork from the show to build on top. You see where I'm going. It just, it's just building on top, on top, on top, on top until you have like a mini Star Wars, a tiny Star Wars, which is cool in my opinion. And uh, figures is something we then got printed and I got to Essen, <laughs> Spielmess um, in, um, in Germany as well. And um, yeah, basically the little scale team. Um, last thing before the Q&A, what I learned was that you become what you do. That's what people will see you as. So work with people you like to work with, do the stuff you like to do. There is the target audience to keep in mind all the time. Uh, if you want to do stuff like I do, it's very hard to finance in the like TV show format or feature film. You have to go to where the audience is, which I did online. Um, and um, be yourself, be transparent, have patience. It's a lot of hard work. You are constantly throwing you into risk and gamble when you are a director, producer, <laughs> you know, making company. It's, it's, uh, you're always throwing the dice and you're hoping on a six, you know. Um, and, um, and then you use all the skill sets and the stuff you don't know, you have to learn or find people who know uh, can do it. Work with a team. That's my biggest advice. Always, always never go alone unless you're doing your own personal short story. Uh, the team will, will keep you pulling each other up. Um, figure out what you want to do. Is it, uh, is it passion driven, indie, keeping rights, creative freedom? Is it going to festivals, long term projects, small team, and low budget? Then you're over on one side. If you're commercial driven, selling rights, short term projects, clients, building CV, networking, and partners big team, high budget, then you're in another field. And this can work together, but usually you are in different uh, periods when you are in the different uh, sites. Last thing before we round up, um, usually you go first for distribution, say what do you want for the target audience and broadcaster. Then you go to platform, which is the format and the experience and how you do the project. And then you build your world and your concept and the rule set and the sign and art. But I think in many of my projects, I did the opposite. I built the world and then I found the format and then I figured out what it fitted into and then I fitted into that. Yeah, so we are going to take questions now. Woo, we made it. <laughs>